and I'm posting it, sir, because this is discrimination. No, yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because you asked no questions. You didn't say, ma'am, do you need help? Are you okay? First thing you said was, you look suspicious. No, Period. I, yes, you did. Never Period. Said. Yes, you did. What? That's why you said you was calling the sheriff, because you said I look I suspicious. Said, no, sir. You like, no, no, you, no, you didn't. You said I look suspicious. Number one is You're not. Words no, no, I'm not. 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 And everybody is going to be able to see this. Everybody is going to be able to see this. Everybody is going to be able to see this. Everybody you're in my neighborhood. To see this. You're sitting Everybody in your car. To be able to you see have this. no place. You don't know if I'm waiting on my daughter to get out of school from pre-K. Stupid ass. Get the sheriff over here. Yeah. Y'all see him? Y'all see him? Y'all see him? Y'all see, see him? Minding my business. And you want to tell me I look suspicious? You wanted to say I look suspicious because of what? The color of my skin. The color, yeah, roll it up. You stopped because I was black. If I was white, you wouldn't have did that. If I was white, you wouldn't have did that. No, I'm not going to stop. You harassing me. You can send the sheriff. Audie. I don't know. I just came home from the store. It was parked. There was no place. It, it, so you need the police here, that's what you need. You need a gun because a black woman is waiting, sitting in a car, existing, having the audacity to breathe. And this is, as you said, Mr. White Man, this is your neighborhood. She has no place. Well, here's the thing, she did have a place and it is not your neighborhood, you see, this happened in Houston, Texas. The follow up videos um, show that she actually did learn the identity of the individual mentioned. And um, let's put them up, go ahead and make them famous, okay? The identity of the man is Freddie Benefield. He's also an engineer for the Houston Fire Department, probably why he knew the sheriff on a first name basis. So he decided to call the sheriff and say, hey, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm here, I came home and oh my God, there's a suspicious black woman in my neighborhood. Um, she was supposed to be there. Her mom uh, lives in that neighborhood uh, and uh, she grew up in that community. Family still lives in that community. Her child plays in that community, definitely not his neighborhood, okay? Um, her videos were also getting reported on and removed for harassment and bullying, which she rightfully found hilarious as indicated from this TikTok sharing. Um, that info, uh, here it is, let's put it up. Yeah, removed for harassment and bullying. So she was she was harassing and bullying the guy, I guess. Okay, uh, Adrian, once again, she's <laughs> just existing. Yep, and I know that one all too well. It's the regulation and policing of black bodies that goes on every day. I can't sit in my car and wait somewhere in a predominantly white neighborhood, no matter what I'm doing, even if it's a neighborhood in which I grew up. And as someone who did grow up in a predominantly white neighborhood, I can attest to that mm. fact. It's just not that you're presumed to be suspicious, no matter what you're doing, that you must be up to no good. And it's like, I don't need to explain myself. I don't need to, I don't need to share where I live or why I'm here. Just go on about your business and stop with your implicit racism, unconscious bias, and just all out foolery. Yeah, I don't know how implicit it was with this fellow because he told her that you have no place here. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I found it, I found it quite interesting. That even when he realized that obviously this woman is not breaking the law, because think about it. If a person is there to break the law, uh, literally, that's the opposite of what will happen, right? A person will get up out of there, they will leave. Hey, guy, we don't want any problems. But it was clear she's not breaking the law, she has a right to be here. She she definitely is not afraid of you calling the sheriff or whatever other buddy you got on speed dial. Even when that happens, and this is what irks me even more. Even when that happens, let's say you're just an ignorant SOB and you really believe that this was suspicious. When you realize it's not, why is it that these individuals do not simply say, you know what? I am sorry, my apologies, I was wrong. I hope you accept my apologies. Why do they never try to remedy the situation or at least regain some level of self-respect and admit they were wrong? You know why? They can't admit they're wrong to a black woman. Of course not.
You don't apologize down. And also, I don't owe you any apology because the fact is the thought that we are violent criminal by nature. So it's the thought that, hey, well, if I didn't catch you doing something wrong this time, there will be a next time. Yeah, and it's quite fascinating that these things continue to happen. I'm hoping that people start to get the picture. One of the reasons why we highlight these stories is because we understand here at Indisputable the power of social design. If we can continue to expose the evil and the corrupt and the racist culture, if we can provide a mirror, that mirror can be reflective on the soul of others. Where it may stop this activity in the future, somebody may think twice about approaching a person, a black person in particular, just for existing. This has been an operation for a long time. Now we have the ability to document it, talk about it, and publicly ridicule it as we see it, all right?